Welcome to r slash Entitled People, where we share stories from your lives about people who think the rules don't apply to them, and they should get what they want. Thank you friends for subscribing to the channel, and for so many likes. And today we have three great stories, so subscribe, hit the like button, and let's begin. The first story. The boss got his best employees fired, and now he's trying to get them back, but no way. The second story. Guest is upset because fridge in her room is too loud for her. Asks me to wake my GM up at 1 in the morning to authorize a full night's compensation for her. I say no and suffer her wrath. <laughs> the third story. Fraud inside company ends up as hidden footnote. The first story is... Another day. Shop life is hard. Every time I meet a newcomer, a noob, an aspiring technician that wishes to learn from me, I like to tell them a few things. Being an automotive technician sucks. There are walls that will knock a lot of noobs out of the race by their second or third year. After my first two years, I quit the industry myself. I returned about a year later as an automotive is my natural habitat. As an aspiring tech, you have to dive headfirst into debt. You will tread in debt for years. Those beautiful toolboxes you see full of tools, the techs buy those. Get a tool catalog and prepare your jaw to drop at the cost of modern tools. They are not shop bought. You will get hurt. You will break fingers. You will crush your spinal discs. You will have arthritis. If you don't wear your safety glasses, ah, just wear them. You'll need an eye cleaning or two. You'll likely get an electric shock or two. And many other not less life-threatening things can happen to you. Don't start unless you know that this is where you will be for a while. It's super draining on your health and soul. It can also be fun. I was working at an amazing shop. The top tech of each week would get a $100 snap-on gift card. Lunch was supplied twice a week, and it had every piece of equipment you could think of. The shop was over 50 years old and had a booming economy. I don't have one bad thing to say about this shop. 10 bays, 5 techs. I hit a wall. I was inundated with mainline for 2 months straight. I would do 4 engine R&R &R jobs, multiple transmissions, and dash work aplenty. During my last month at this shop, Every time I turned around, it was another 10 to 22 hour job. My stamina, endurance, and mentality was waning. During this last month, two other techs would feel the same way. The shop had hot rods being restored, blank checks being brought in, and plenty of spiting and cussing going around. The shop was doing great, but our souls were beaten and bruised. The three of us, team top tech, would come in at 5 a.m. and work until 6 to 7 p.m. We were working six day weeks. To make up for the influx of main line that the shop was drowning in, the owner decided that he would hire another tech. The top tech team gathered every morning to warm up and drink some coffee before starting our work. So another tech. He thinks that's gonna solve this SH? Right? This is draining. I just wanna do a window regulator or even a fuel pump. Just once. Yeah. Well, who's going to have to sacrifice a bay for the FNG? Effing new guy. Not me. Not me. Well, I ain't giving up a bay. The new guy would eat up a bay from a non-top tech. I kind of felt for the new guy for like one minute. He came into the shop at a very stressful time. We learned the new guy was hired as an A plus tech. We realized he was maybe a B tech. So when he had Diag or a labor sum job, he would ask one of us for help. Super annoying. My last job at that shop was install client supplied engine. He wanted his new and used weathered engine and engine bay stripped and painted prior to install. After the painting and R&R, &R, the vehicle ran like utter SH. F. I had to diagnose it. Two cylinders had nearly zero compression, and the leak down test showed 10% life in the worst of cylinders. The client's issue was discussed with him by one of my service riders. I learned the client got the engine from a buddy, and it had been sitting in the backyard for years. It looked like it, before the painting. The client decided to buy a new crate engine from Summit. I got the R&O, repair order back, looked it over. What the hell? Oh hell no. The labor to do an engine in this vehicle was 22 hours. Original job was 26 for stripping and painting. The RO wanted me to do another one for 14 hours, and no additional time for the compression and leak down tests that I had already conducted. My service writer told me to take it up with the owner of the shop. His call, not mine. I knocked on my shop owner's door. He looked up from his desk, saw me inside. What's up? 14 hours? Well, he just bought a new engine and doesn't have the money for too much more labor. I don't care. I'm not doing it for 14 hours. You pay me or he pays me. We did some spiting and snarling at each other for about 5 minutes. We came to an agreement. The client would pay for his 14 hours. The owner would pay for 4 more. And until the job was completed, he would buy me lunch. The first 26 hour job would be on this week's paycheck. Whatever. So I had other work until the client's crate came in. 
I had already pulled the other engine out and was ready to install the new. The engine came in a few days later. While I was waiting on the crate to arrive, the owner decided to hire another tech. That is 7 techs, 10 bays. My bays were to be cut in half. I put my 2 weeks notice in. Not doing months of mainline, get my bays cut in half, which cuts my work in half. You'll ask me to help the new guy. No, I'm out. The owner seemed to not care. Everyone knew this shop and wanted to work at this shop. I was done with it. I hit a wall. 12 to 16 hour days, 6 day weeks. I was done. The new tech moved in and got sick that day I guess. I never saw him again. He was sick for the rest of the week. The crate had come in and the job turned out well. The client was happy. The minute, literally the minute the vehicle was driven off, I was asked by the owner to pack my belongings up and leave. Whatever. About a month later I received a call from the shop owner. He asked me to come back but not just that. He was also calling the other two techs from Team Top Tech to come back as well. They both quit within a week of me quitting. I told him to bugger off. About two weeks later a tech from his shop mysteriously appeared at the shop that I was working at. Oh, I was in the neighborhood. Thought I would drop by. See how you were holding up. He was on a mission to recruit me back. All three of the members in Top Tech never was reacquired. The second story is... I demand you call the manager. I checked a guest in last night while working 3 to 11. They're not from the US and have a very strong accent, so it's a bit hard to make sense of what they're saying. No problems while checking them in. They told me they needed help getting tickets for an amusement park and I told them I could help with that. This is a family of a husband and wife and two teen kids. They go up to the room and call me about 10 minutes later saying that they need to change rooms because the room wasn't cleaned. I check the HK list and see that the housekeeper marked the room as clean, so I tell them I'll switch them to a different room right away. Being the only person on the FD on a night with 90% occupancy is not fun at all, so I get a group of three rooms, come in as soon as I put down the phone. While I'm checking these people in, the lady's two kids come down and are staring at me, while I'm frantically trying to get these guests checked in, because they all want to split payments on all three rooms and all that BS. As soon as I get done checking them in, I make keys for another room and tell the kids to come with me. I decide because the family was upset, I'll upgrade them to a bigger room. As soon as I get off the elevator on their floor, the lady is glaring at me because I took too long to come up. I tried to explain to her why it took so long, but she interrupted me and asked me to show her to their new room. I take them to their new room and they're content, but the lady is still upset because of how long they had to wait. I pay no mind to it and head back down. I have more check-ins, great. So I get back to business and I get another call from the room I just moved the lady and her family to. Now she's complaining that the refrigerator is too loud and it's not working properly. This is an upgraded room where everything is better than the other rooms, mind you. Even has one of those two-door fridge and freezer things rather than the mini fridge with a small compartment for the freezer on top. I go up to her room to look at it and it's working perfectly fine. I turned up the cooling on the thermostat and I'm about to leave when she says that the mini fridge is too loud. I tell her all the fridges we have do have a slight buzzing sound but she wants me to move another fridge into the room. I told her I couldn't be away from the desk to do that so I'll not be moving into fridges. I give her the option of unplugging the fridge completely and storing her items in the locked kitchen of our breakfast room. She likes that idea and does that. About 15 minutes after that interaction they're down in the business center getting their tickets. The front desk is literally 5 feet away from the desk with nothing blocking the way. So I and them have a clear view of each other from where we are. I'm here trying to take phone calls and check in multiple guests. And in the middle of it all she comes up to me 5 times to come and help them with the tickets. I tell her I'll be right with them as soon as I'm done helping people check in but she doesn't like that. Once I'm done I go up and help her son print the tickets. And while on their way back to the room she tells me that she's not happy with how she's being treated. And here I am trying to do everything I can in my power to help her with her issues. Anyway tonight I come in for my NA shift and my coworker tells me that the lady wants one of her nights comped for her troubles. To be honest I was expecting something of that sort to happen. But because this was a third party prepaid reservation, my coworker told her that she would have to contact Hotels.com herself to get any compensation. This lady comes down at about 12.15am, telling me she's very disappointed, and I tell her the same thing my coworker told her. She says she needs to use the front desk phone to call them, because she couldn't call from her room as the call wasn't going through. I tell her she had to press 8 before dialing any other number to call a number outside of the hotel, and she asks me if she can use my own cell phone to call this third party to complain about my hotel. I tell her the instructions for outgoing calls are on the phone in a room, and she can go and call them. About 12.45am I get a call from T Hotels about our mutual guest. I hate that term. They wanted to see if there was any compensation I could offer, and I told them that that was something only the GM had the right to authorize, so they could call us tomorrow morning to speak to the GM anytime between 9 and 4. 
They understood and cut the call. Moments later, this lady is back at the FD, and she wants to know why I didn't authorize the refund. I tell her why, and she goes on to tell me to call my manager right now. I tell her it's almost 1 in the morning and I will not be disturbing my GM for this situation. She goes, I don't care what time it is. You call him, you leave him a message, just do whatever so I can have my money back. I again repeated myself and she took down my name, and now she's going to call corporate about me. I'm so done with the attitude of these people that feel like they're entitled to everything they ask for just because they're paying 100 bucks a night for a hotel room. Good thing I'm putting my two weeks notice in tomorrow because I'm starting another job in about two weeks time. Just got offered the job earlier today. Goodbye and good riddance, horrible hotel guests. And the last story is... Can't make this SH up. My 37 female, if it matters, career at this company was somewhat long. Eight years. And I worked in multiple departments and specialty projects along the way. My prior company is a public one involved in specialty finance, but greater than 1B in annual revenue and greater than 8K employees. I was responsible for the migration of key operating systems. We started out with contractors doing a lot of the development work as the rest of IT was involved in other projects. Over the three plus years we mostly kept the contractors on, only letting go of the ones that weren't performing, and slowly pulled in the FTEs as the project expanded scope, as POCs proved positive. I was working on business requirements but midway through I was asked to build an enterprise data lake and manage an existing small team of business intelligence analysts. Well when one of those analyst contracts expired, at the direction of my then BP, more story here if you want it. I used one of our existing contracting documents to copy for updating and found out we were paying over 100k annually for our contractors, times 30 at least for the project. What was surprising about the number was that it was for talent with mostly less than 5 years experience. Fast forward 3 months later, someone confides to me that they know my CIO and CTO is getting under the table perks from this contracting company. I reach out to our head of legal HOL and tell him. He and I go back and forth all in person or via phone call because the CIO and CTO can access all records across the company. And one week later he brings me in for a conference call with an external lawyer, EL. I repeat the same stuff I told the HOL and then EL says, do you know of anyone else that may have been involved? At this point I stammered and HOL mutes the conference call, says, we know more than you do and unmutes. I give two more names that were known associates and that was it. Three weeks later office is abuzz because HOL and security escorted all three names I mentioned, plus two more. SVP, CIO and CTO, VP, Senior Manager, Senior Manager and Manager. I play dumb to everyone, call the HOL to make sure it was all related and closed up, confirm my anonymity etc. So remember where I mentioned it was a public company? They never reported the millions of dollars in overpayment. Said SVP was a reportable officer. Was still working with the contracting company two years later. HOL just sold greater than $1 million worth of stock, and all involved received severance and are at their next new jobs with none the wiser. I had to leave the company because my depression spiral put my mental health at risk, but seeing the notification of the stock sale brought it all back up. I hope you love these stories. Subscribe, hit the like button, and turn on notifications.